Welcome back to Investments 101 for segment number two. In my introduction, I promised you that we would be taking our time, taking baby steps in our journey into investing. And to prove it, in this segment, I will not be talking investments. Instead, I will be talking about clothes, hockey, and food. I know it may sound a little strange, but we live in a world that is transformed. Products are being transformed and the investment industry is no different. There are transformed products. So I created a transformation chart that I will be adapting for the three subjects. Once again, clothes, hockey, and food. And the reason for this is simple. When it's time for me to adapt the chart for investments, I will be able to make reference to the comments that I made when I describe these other three topics. So without any further delay, here's the chart. As you can see, there are five different positions to that graphic. At position number one, we have some basic ingredients. This is our starting point. At position number two, some human intervention takes place where the basic ingredients are transformed into something more useful that I call our refined options. At position number four, a choice has to be made. This is where we usually find ourselves with a decision. We weigh our options and finally at position number five we came to a decision, a final choice was made. So now that you've seen the chart, as promised, I'm going to use it and modify it slightly for the three different subjects I talked about. So I'm going to disappear for a little while, but I'm going to come back for a final word before we finish this segment. As you can see, it's the same chart with some changes. At position number one, our starting point, we have our fabrics and accessories. And by that I mean leather, wool, denim, buttons, zippers, and so on. At position two, where the human intervention happens, I want you to think of a seamstress a manufacturer that will use these fabric and accessories and turn them into something more useful for us. Uh, pants, uh, shirts, jackets, boots, shoes, and so on. That will find themselves going to a store and that we will purchase and bring home to our clothes closet, which is position number three. At position number four, we have a dilemma we need to get dressed, so some decisions have to be made, so we weigh our options. We could have some pre-arranged options. By that I mean, if you are a member of the military, you may have a uniform to wear, so there isn't much of a decision to be made. It's been made for you, it's mandatory, and that's what you wear, and that's it. It could also be a work uniform, or Maybe you're getting dressed for a special occasion like a prom, a wedding, a funeral, or something like that, and you've already looked into your outfit. So once again, easy decision, you've already given the thought, you just get dressed. On the other hand, it could be made on the spot. It's the weekend, you look outside, check the weather, and you decide what to wear on the spot. So that is the chart adapted for clothes. All right, now time to talk hockey. As you can see, same chart with some changes. Our basic ingredients this time around are hockey players from around the world. What I mean by that, I mean Canadian players, American players, international players, and these players fall in two main categories. They are forwards or they are defensemen. So these are our basic ingredients. At position number two, where the human intervention happens, 
I want you to picture the team's general manager. In this case, I chose the Toronto Maple Leafs. The GM's job is to build a team, and for this, there is a draft process. There are trades, there are agents to deal with, there are contracts to be signed. And when that is all done, the team has a bunch of hockey players under contract. At position number three, we find the best of this bunch. So the best hockey players are made available to the coach. They sit on the bench. These guys are the options the coach have to use. Position number four, we have the coach. And that's his job to decide who's going to go on the ice. The prearranged options in this case would be the lines. Ahead of time, the coach and the players made sure they were on the same page and everyone knows who belongs to the first line, the second line, the third line. So if you are familiar with hockey, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All the coach has to say during a game is first line and these guys just stand up and jump on the ice. They know it's their turn. You also got power play number one and power play number two. So these would be your prearranged uh, decisions. The ones made on the spot would happen if for some reason, let's say a player was to get injured, then the coach would have to shuffle his lines around. So that's when he would have to step in and take control on the spot, depending on the situation. So that is the chart adapted for hockey. All right, stay with me. This is the third and last one. I said we would be talking about food. It's actually a Chinese restaurant. As I said, I will be making reference to this when it comes to investing. And this one in particular is my favorite. It's the one I'll be using most when it comes time to adapt the same chart to investments. But let's go through with the Chinese restaurant. In this case, we have our basic ingredients are the meats, the fruits, the vegetables, pastas, spices, and so on. So that's position one, our starting point. At position number two, where the human intervention takes place, I want you to picture the chef who, along with the owner, are going to build a menu. So the chef is told to build so many chicken dishes, so many beef dishes, so many shrimp dishes, veggie dishes, uh, pastas, you name it. At position number three, we have our refined options, which in this case are our menu. A huge assortment of various dishes. At position four is us. We are in and we have to decide what we want. We have some prearranged options, and that is the reason for the Chinese restaurant is because this is where you would find the, the prearranged uh, uh, options I'm referring to, the combo plates. Everything is done for convenience, so instead of having to pick from the menu, a whole meal has been designed for us. And we have several different options, combo number one, combo number two, combo number three. So we look at the, the different uh, suggestions there and we pick the one that's uh, best for us and we're done. So convenience uh, at the restaurant. Another option, once again, is to decide on the spot, which would be to choose from the menu and select the individual dishes that we want. So... This is the chart adapted for food, in this case, a Chinese restaurant. I know, it was strange. We just spent several minutes talking about things that had nothing to do with investing. But take my word for it, we did not waste our time. The comments I made when I described these three different topics, I will be using when it's time to adapt that same chart for investing. So this is the end of segment number two. See you in the next one.